good day, grade 11. Sorry if I sound hesitant, but I'm not sure. It says the connection to Skype meeting broadcast was now attempting to reconnect. Um, just bear with me for a second. I'm going to join. Right, and we're back. Welcome, grade 11s. I apologize for that um, quite an interesting start to the broadcast and to the lesson. Um, in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to carry on with the sign. Well, we did the cosine rule, but we're going to carry on with the cosine rule. We're going to prove it to you and we're going to use it to solve some examples. And then we're going to do the area rule and then we're going to do some mixed examples. So let's get started straight away. First of all, the cosine rule which you are given says in the exams on your formula sheet says that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. In other words, if you've got big A over here, then the opposite side is called little a. Big B, the opposite side is called little b. And big C, the opposite side is called little c. Then what they're saying is that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos that angle there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prove it. So what we have is a basic triangle. We've got A, B, and C, and we've got little a opposite big A, little b, which is the length of the side, opposite big B, and then obviously little c opposite um, big C. But what we've done is we've dropped down a perpendicular. And obviously, just to make life easy for ourselves, we've called this the height. If that's the height, we can then call this length here D. And then the whole of this length would be obviously the whole of C minus the short length of D. So therefore, this is C, D. Okay. So it means C minus D. So now we're going to look at different parts of this big triangle and use it to prove the cos rule. So if we look at triangle DCB, I know it's this big one, yeah, this one on the right hand side. If we look at this triangle and we use Pythagoras, do you agree that we can say A squared is equal to this side squared plus this side squared, just by Pythagoras. So that is equal to C minus, let's try again. Oh, sorry. Try again. Is equal to C minus D all squared plus H squared. Okay, that's just by Pythagoras, okay? Then if we look at the triangle on the left, this triangle, yeah. Do you agree we can say that B squared is equal to D squared plus H squared? So again, we have got just using Pythagoras. But do you see you've got two equations H squared in? So we can actually solve for this. We could say that the first line goes to, if I can get my red to work, that could become H squared is equal to A squared minus, that's a minus, oh, sorry guys, minus C minus D all squared. And similarly, we can say that H squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. So now, because both the red equation and the blue equation have got h squared as a subject of the formula do you agree that we can let them these two um, equations be equal so i'm going to use a different color and i'm going to go well in that case a squared minus 
C minus D squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for A squared because that's what our formula, our equation goes for. So if we do that, we've got A squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. And when I take this across, it becomes a plus. So it becomes plus C minus D all squared. And I'm going to square this out. So it becomes B squared minus D squared plus, and let's just write this up properly, it becomes C squared minus 2 CD, okay, plus D squared, okay. And then if I write it up properly, and I'm just going to move this over a little bit, I've got A squared equals B squared minus D squared plus C squared minus 2 CD plus D squared. So do you see that minus D squared cancels with positive D squared? Okay, so what am I left with? I'm left with a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2cd. Now let's look at what the theory says. The theorem says a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. That's what we're aiming for. Okay, so now we need to work out how we can possibly relate this to get something, okay? But now, if we look at our blue triangle, our triangle ACD, ACD, our blue triangle, do you agree that cos of A, look, this is a right angle triangle, and if we're looking at Sarkatoa, do you agree that cos of A is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, right? The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we could say, um, and I'm writing it up here, cos of A is equal to the adjacent side, which is D over B, okay? So therefore, do you agree I could say that D is equal to B cos A? And I could substitute that into this equation. So I end up with a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And there you go. There I have proven the cos rule. Okay, guys, you need to know how to prove the cos rule. You have to be able to prove the sign rule, the cos rule, and the area rule, both this year and next year, especially for the final. So please make sure you can do that. Okay, so let's do an example. Now, the trick with the cos rule is that you generally use it if you've got two sides and an enclosed angle. Then you use the cos rule. And the way that I always help my students to try and remember this is it looks kind of like a C. You've got that line, that line, and you've got that angle. So therefore, that's the cos rule. Whereas if you have two random sides, like this side, this side, and that angle, then you have to look at the sign rule. Okay. It says Q is a ship. Okay, so here is Q and it's a ship and it's 10 kilometers due south of another ship. Okay, let's make it another ship. This one's got a mast. Okay, R is a lighthouse. Okay, R is a lighthouse. Okay, angle P and Q is 50 degrees and 50 degrees. So do you agree that these sides are actually equal to each other because of the fact that they are isosceles triangles because that's X and that's X. Okay, and by the way, that's what still R. So that, if that's 50 degrees and that's 50 degrees, do you agree that add up to 100 degrees of this, but this is 80 degrees. So it's not a right angle triangle, so we can't use Sagatoa. And they want the distance QR. They want the distance QR. Okay. So let's think about this. Is this a cos rule or is it um, a sine rule? 
okay? So we've got A over sine A equals B over sine. We could use the sine rule. Let me think about this. If this was X, we could say X over sine of 50 degrees is equal to, um, this would have been 10 over sine of 80 degrees. So that if X is going to be 10 sine 50 degrees over sine 80 degrees. Okay, so that was definitely a sign rule question. And if I then pop this in my calculator, what do we get? We get 10 sine of 50, sine, sine of 50, okay, divided by sine of 80, close bracket, equals 7.78. So x equals 7 comma 7 eight kilometers. So that length there is seven comma seven eight kilometers, which is so is that. Okay. Now it says they want the shortest distance from the lighthouse joining to the line joining the two ships PQ. So they want the shortest distance. They want this. They want this. Okay. So obviously the shortest distance is going to be the perpendicular line from here to this line okay it's going to be the perpendicular it's going to be the perpendicular line from that line so we know therefore that this is 90 degrees oh sorry we know that this is 90 degrees we've got that this is 50 degrees and we've got that this is 7.78 so do you agree that we could just use Sakatoa to get this shortest distance which i'm going to call r t r t I'm going to call this T, so therefore my shortest distance is going to be RT. Okay, so we've got Sakatoa. We want this side. We've got the opposite angle. We've got the opposite angle of 50 degrees. We've got the hypotenuse. So do you agree that we want sine? So we can say sine of 50 degrees is equal to this opposite side, which I'm calling RT, over the hypotenuse, which is 7 comma 7, 8. So there was 7 comma 7, 8 sine 50 degrees is equal to RT. So now all we need to do is get out our calculators and go 7 point 7, 8 multiplied by sine of 50 close bracket equals 5.96 5.96 so RT equals 5,96 kilometers and grade 11s please remember that if you even if they don't have, I mean, if they have units, you always have to include the units in the answer. Like if they don't have units, then you can just say units. But if they've got kilometers or meters or whatever, you always include the units. Okay, let's do another question. It says a surveyor is trying to determine the distance between points X and point Z. Okay, so he's trying to find this distance here. However, the distance cannot be determined directly as a ridge lies between the two points. From point Y, which is equidistant from X and Z, so if that's little X, is also going to be little X, he measures the angle X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and he comes up with theta. It says if X, Y equals X and X, Y, Z is theta, then show that XZ is this thing here. So this is definitely using the cos rule, okay? Because we've got two sides and an enclosed angle, and we want the third side. So this is definitely the cos rule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go XZ squared is equal to this side squared plus that side squared minus 2, that side, 
multiplied by that side, and then cos of theta. Okay, so if we multiply, if we um, sim simplify this, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared, minus 2 times x times x is 2x squared, cos theta. So if x squared is equal to 2x squared minus 2x squared cos theta, and if we look here, we can see we're almost there, we need to take out a common factor. So you can see that there's 2x squared in the first term and 2x squared in the second term. So we can take out the common factor and we go x squared is equal to 2x squared times that 1 minus cos theta. So now I'm starting to get excited because I can see that I've already got that 1 minus cos theta sorted. Okay, but now this is xz and this is xz squared. So what we're going to do is square it both sides. So that becomes xz is equal to the square root of 2x squared 1 minus cos theta. And the only thing that has that is squared is this x. So therefore you can take that out of the bracket and it becomes x square root 2 times 1 minus cos theta and there you go. So we've proven it. Now it says, calculate xz to the nearest kilometer. If little x is 240 kilometers, so this is 240 kilometers, and theta equals 132 degrees. Okay, so that's really not that difficult because all that we are doing is substituting these values into this equation. So let's do that. We've got xz is equal to x, which is what? It's 240 multiplied by the square root of 2 times 1 minus cos of 132 degrees. Okay, so let's get out our calculator. And again, I'm just going to say to you that a lot of my students say to me, why do I bother showing you guys how to do it in the calculator? And the reason is that I find a lot of my students can do the difficult stuff. It's weird. You guys can do all this tricky stuff, but as soon as it gets to putting the stuff in the calculator, the answer just comes out all wrong. And it's because you haven't been taught how to use calculators properly. And yes, there is a good proper way to work out to use a calculator. So let's have a look at it. First of all, we've got 240. Then we're going to multiply it by the square root of 2 times bracket 1 minus cos of 132. Close bracket. So you see that everything so far is under the square root, but you'll notice that I've got, this is one bracket, I need a second bracket to close there, and then I can go equals, and I end up with 438, 50. 438, 50 equals 438, 50. And have I said what unit here? Yes, we're using kilometers, so therefore this is kilometers. Okay, not too bad, hey. Right, let's move on to the area rule. So the area rule for this is based on the area rule that says in geometry that area is a half um, base times height, okay? So this is a half and then it's AB sine C, or in this case, a half QR sine P or a half PR sine Q or a half PQ, PQ sine R. So you can see the, the actual pattern here is that you are looking at a half of two sides multiplied by the sine of the enclosed angle. Okay, so let's prove this. Okay, so it says show, this is basically the proof. It says show that the area of the triangle DEF is a half DF sine E. Okay, so obviously capital D's length, the opposite of it is little d. Capital big E is opposite is little e. And capital big F, the little opposite is little f. And then what we've done is we've taken this line out and we've dropped down the perpendicular so that we've got a height. And why do we do that? Because normally when we're working out area, we go half 
base times perpendicular height. So now, if we're looking at triangle DHE, this one here, since we've drawn it, do you agree that we can use Sokotoa because of the fact that it's a right angle triangle? Right angle triangle. So we can use Sokotoa, so we can say sine of E2, this angle here, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we can say sine of E2 is equal to H over F, right? Therefore, do you agree that we can say H sine, no sorry, H of is equal to F sine E2. But now we need to try and get into this triangle here so we can relate this. We can say this equals F of sine of 180 degrees minus E1. Okay, because this is on the straight line. E1 is supplementary to E2. So therefore, we can say that F is sine of 180 minus E1. But now, Let's talk about cast diagram. Um, do you agree that 180 minus an angle is equal to that angle because it's in the second quadrant? So this is the same as F sine E1. Okay, F sine E1. That is what H is equal to. Right. Now we're going to use the same idea But what we're going to do is we're going to use the area rule. Now, the area rule, as you know, is a half base times perpendicular height. So what have we got? We've got a half, and then the base length is D. And this time, the perpendicular height is H, but it also equals F sine E1. So what are we saying? We're saying that the area of this triangle can be given by half D times F times sine of the angle between them. Right, so now let's look at a nice example. It says find the area of the shaded triangle in terms of X, alpha, beta, theta, and phi. Sure, okay. So do we agree that the area of a triangle equals a half a b sine c? Okay, a half a b sine c. So now they want the area of the shaded bits. In other words, they want the area of this bit here. Okay, so now Hmm, I'm wondering why you want it in terms of pi. Okay, right. So now, do you agree that what we could do is we could realize that, I don't know why they want it in terms of phi. We've got it and we can get it in terms of, sorry, I'm just thinking about this. This line is equal to this line, so this is x. Oh, I see. Okay, so if we look at it, this is x. Okay, this is alpha, that's beta, that's phi, and that's 90 degrees. Um, okay, because let me tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that when I first saw this, my initial thought was that I would have to find the area of this whole thing. Okay, the area of the whole thing and then subtract this area and subtract this area and I'd end up with that area there, okay? But now I'm thinking I could do this a lot easier by just looking at this triangle here and then subtracting just this bit here. But the problem is then I don't have phi as an angle. So that's not going to work, is it? Okay, so let us do it the other way. So let's have a look. So first off, they want the area of the shaded region, which is this bit here. Okay. 
Remember that our rules for area, or area is a half AB sine C, or a half base times perpendicular height, just say. Okay, so now, do you agree that we've got a 90 degree triangle there, so we can actually use that rule, okay, that a half base times perpendicular height. Okay, but we don't have that a rule there and we don't have that rule there. Also, if this is equal to this, do you agree that this is X and that is also going to be X? So let's start off by looking at, um, okay, so if that is X and that is X, X alpha beta sine gamma theta. Okay, do you agree I can I see? Do you agree I can get this length here using Sokotoa? Okay, I can get length E B using Sokotoa. Okay. There we go. This we can get. This side here we can get using Sokotoa. Okay, so this would be the hypotenuse and we've got the adjacent. Okay, so therefore we can get phi. So we're going to use Sokotoa. Right, so what we're saying is we've got the adjacent, it's x, we want the hypotenuse. Oh. So we're going to look at cos. So we're going to go cos of phi is equal to the adjacent x over the hypotenuse. Therefore, we want the hypotenuse. H is going to equal to x over cos phi. Okay, so now we've got this side. Do you agree? Now remember what is the rule? The rule is a half AB sine C. So that would mean that this is the sine C. Okay, so therefore we would want this. Okay, let's just work it out. Just to show you, you've got A, B, C. This is little b, this is little c, and that you want the two sides half a b sine c again this would be a so it'd be a half a b sine c so it's always two sides and they enclose angle when we're talking about your area rule so we've got that okay do you agree we could get ed we can get bd we can get bd Let's get BD. And how are we going to get BD? Well, we've got this angle here, which is beta. We've got this angle here, which is alpha. We've got, therefore, we can use the sine rule. We can say that BD over sine alpha, sine alpha is equal to um, x over sine beta. Therefore, we can say BD, let me write it properly. We can say BD is equal to X sine alpha over sine beta. Okay, so we've got X alpha beta theta and phi. X alpha beta, okay, right. So now we've got BD. Ding, which is that side there. Now what we need is another angle. So do you agree that this angle, what, what have we got? We've got theta, we've got that this would be 100, okay. So we can get that angle there. How do we get that angle there? Well, if we wanted to, we could say this angle here is theta. So therefore, this angle has to be beta minus theta. It has to be beta minus theta. Beta minus theta, because it's the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So now let's do the area rule. We got two sides and an enclosed angle. So we're going to go. The area is equal to half 
A, B, sine C. That's what we're doing. So the half A is this purple line here, which is X over cos phi. Then we've got this side here, which is B, D, which is going to be X sine alpha over sine beta. And then finally, we've got this little angle here, which is going to be sine. Why is it sine? Yes, yeah, sine because it's a sine rule of beta minus theta. So let me write it out again. Area is equal to a half. X times X is X squared. So it's going to be X squared. Then it's sine alpha sine of beta minus theta all over cos phi sine beta. There you go. So now we have found, and let's just check, is it an X? Yes. Is it an alpha? Yes. Is there beta? Yes. Is there theta? Yes. Is there phi? Yes. Sorted. Okay. So we have found the equation for the area for that little shaded in area. Not an easy question. Definitely a nice, nice, nice question for exams. And it would have some have some levels. I would have to ask you some hints and tips like working out BE and then working out BD to give you an idea of where you are aiming for as you moved along. That was a very nice question. I like that question. Right, now let's do some mixed examples that have got sign rule, cos rule, and area rule in them. Okay, it says at point N, which is N meters, little N meters. This is N meters from the top of the power. A bird has made its nest. Okay, so here's the nest and there is the bird. Yes, I know. I'm a terrible artist. The angle of inclination from G to point A is alpha. Okay, so from there to there, all the way up. And the angle of inclination from G to point B is N. So that there, I mean, for Ben B is beta. Okay. Now the first thing it says express angle AGN. A, G, N. A, G, N in terms of alpha and beta. Okay, so that's pretty easy. If the whole of this is alpha and the whole of that is beta, then obviously this tiny angle here, which we're going to call A, G, N, A, G, N is going to be alpha minus beta. Okay, pretty obvious. The whole of that is alpha, the whole of that is beta. Therefore, this little angle is alpha minus beta. Right, now they say express angle A, this angle here, in terms of either alpha and or beta. Okay, so we know what this angle is, it is alpha minus beta. We also know what the whole of this angle is, it's alpha. So do you agree that if we look at this big triangle AGT, we could say in the triangle AGT, okay, We've got alpha and we've got the 90. Therefore, we can say that angle A is going to be 180 degrees minus 90 plus alpha, right? Which is going to be 90 minus alpha degrees. So therefore, this angle here is 90 minus alpha. Okay, not too bad here. Hey? Now it says, hmm, and let's just erase some stuff. It says, show that the height of the nest above the ground can be determined by this formula. So what are they asking? They're asking us to show that this height here, that height there, above the nest, Okay, the height of that of the nest from the ground can be determined by this equation. Okay, so the first thing you always do is read the equation. It's n, okay, which is little n, which is this length, cos of alpha, okay, 
sine beta, okay, over sine of alpha minus beta. So there was a reason why they asked us to work this out, okay? So if that's the case, and we see that we've got N, which is unfortunately the short straw. So do you agree that since I've got sine of this little angle and N, I should be looking at possibly using the sine rule in the top triangle? Okay, so in other words, I should be looking at the sine rule in this triangle, yeah. So if that's the case, I've got N over sine of what that was. Okay, and what was that? That was N minus P. Okay, N minus P. It's not N minus P. Sorry, alpha minus P. Okay, sorry about that. Alpha minus beta. Alpha minus beta. Why was that green? Alpha minus beta. Okay, is going to equal to Okay, so what are we doing? We are doing that N over sine of alpha minus beta is equal to, and do you agree I want this line here? Because what I want to do is try and get from this green triangle into this bottom triangle, because that's what I'm actually asking for is the height. So I'm going to say that, okay, it equals NG over sine of 90 minus alpha. Okay, so then do you agree I can solve for NG? I can say that NG is equal to N sine of 90 minus alpha all over sine of alpha minus beta. So if I look here, do you see the sine of alpha minus beta is at the bottom? Yay! And now I've got this... Why have I written a 9? Oh, it's a long day. Sorry, guys. I don't know what is going on here. That's not a nine. It's an N. Sorry. And then I've got little N. Okay. Sine of 90 minus alpha. But what is 90 minus alpha? 90 minus alpha. Uh, 90 minus alpha is cos alpha. Okay, so what do we have? We've got that this is equal to N cos of alpha over sine of, nine, of alpha, alpha minus beta. Okay, so now if we look here, we've got sine of alpha minus beta, we've got cos alpha and N. Okay, so we've got this dude here totally sorted. But this little angle here, by the way, was beta. Okay, and we want H. So again, we're going to look at, wait for it, Sakatoa. We have got the hypotenuse, we've got the beta, and we want the opposite side, we want the height. So therefore, we can say opposite is sine of beta equals the opposite side, which is her, over the height of this, which is ng. I mean, over the length of this, which is ng, right? Opposite of our hypotenuse, that's over ng, right? But we just worked out what ng was, it was this horrible thing, yeah. So therefore, do you agree that height is equal to ng sine beta? So therefore, it is the whole of this multiplied by sine beta. So there you go, we've proven it. We can say for therefore, h is equal to n cos alpha sine beta all over sine of alpha minus beta. There you go. Right, grade 11s, that's it for today. We will continue looking at um, some more exam paper questions on this tomorrow, on Monday, okay? And then we will move on to our next section. Have a great day.